Hello, welcome to another case or welcome back. Today I'm going to be covering the case of Phoenix Next. Before I get started, I want to just say, as I keep meaning to say in every video, that everything I've found is just on media sources and internet searches. So I do believe everything to be true, but it's the internet, so. I'm going to cover Phoenix's case slightly different. On the 12th of May 2020, peak COVID, remember them times? Gloucestershire Police received a call about a suspicious car driving down the road near the Forest of Dean. As this was COVID, as I'm sure you remember, police used to pull cars over to make sure they were out for essential reasons only. So they pulled this suspicious car over and there was a guy in there. Police asked like what his motive is and he said that he was waiting for a friend. They didn't deem this to be suspicious, so they just let him go. Police just continued to parole the general area, and then as they were patrolling, that doesn't seem right. As they were driving around, they noticed a suitcase. As you know, if you're a true crimer or police, that suitcases are never a good sign. The same car as earlier got pulled again, but this time by a different police force. They seen him drive slowly by the suitcase, pulled him over and questioned him again. But this time he got fined for a breach of COVID rule. So once this was all done and they let the car go, they looked back at the suitcase, but this time there was a woman standing by the suitcase. So not only is this suitcase out in the woods, with a suspicious car driving slowly by it and now a woman standing outside of this suitcase. It screams something bad's gonna happen. The police went straight over to investigate this woman and the suitcase. The police got closer, they realised there was actually two suitcases there and their presence was not welcome. This woman was trying to divert the police by saying all sorts. She did not want the police to look in the suitcase. Police had body cams on and they were able to record the whole thing, which I'll insert because there's so much footage. She was trying to stall them from opening them up. When they did, a grim discovery was made. You're going to get arrested for obstructing police. All right, I don't want to. I don't want to stop you guys. You are. You are stopping us. You are stopping us. Okay, can I just? Can I just explain? Because as as I, as I said before, as I said before, like I don't. I've had, Step away, I've please. Had, I've had issues with that. Before. Step yeah, away, please. That. Just stand there. Okay. What the? In the video, you can hear a police officer say, "What the?" As soon as the suitcase opened, because when it opened, it explained exactly why the woman was trying to delay them opening it. In these two suitcases was a dismembered body. Immediately, the police arrested this woman on suspicion of murder because she is the prime suspect. She's literally standing outside of a suitcase saying everything under the sun to try and delay them opening it and that is what is inside. The body the police discovered in the two suitcases was Phoenix Nets. She was a 28 year old woman who was born and raised in Croydon in South London. Phoenix did not have it easy growing up. At a young age her parents split up and she found this really hard to deal with and from then she just struggled throughout her whole childhood. Phoenix did well in school but after school, she just fell into the wrong crowd. She started chilling and dating a drug dealer, which meant she had easy access to drugs if she wanted them. For Phoenix, it just started off as smoking weed, which isn't a big deal. Then it went on to harder drugs like acid, cocaine, and MDMA. So Phoenix was dealing with her mental health, past traumas, and now a drug dependency. She attempted to turn her life around in 2009 and attended the Canterbury Christ Church University. This university was in Kent and she went to pursue her dreams of becoming a paramedic. And things really started to look up for Phoenix. She was enjoying university. She met a guy called Joe and they started dating and made it official so she was in this relationship. Phoenix trusted Joe enough to confide in him. She told him that before she attended university, a drug dealer raped her. To Joe, it was quite evident that Phoenix was quite vulnerable and after she passed, he released a statement. What I'm about to read now is Joe's words. Phoenix lived most in the past and a little in the moment and majority of the time she was stoned. She barely ate anything 
and I'm not sure whether that was the PTSD. He went on to say that she was vulnerable and experienced the dark side of the world that not many people realised was there. After two years, Phoenix didn't make it through university. She decided to drop out. Not long after, her and Joe split up. Some years have passed and I believe Phoenix fell back into her drug use. I was unable to find out what happened in this part of Phoenix's life. But Phoenix attempted to make a fresh start once again and in 2019 she moved into a woman's refuge in Birmingham. She wasn't completely alone in Birmingham, she had some family there but she didn't know anyone in this refuge. Phoenix went to this hostel as a safe haven, she was ready to get her life back on track, she had her parents support. In this hostel Phoenix had her own room. But next to her was a lady of a similar age, like 27, 28. This lady was called Garika Gordon? Garisa? Garisa Gordon. Both Phoenix and Gordon had a lot in common. They both had mental health issues, PTSD and drug dependencies. I don't know why I said they had a lot in common, like it was going to be like good stuff. Yeah, they, they had things they could relate over, let's say. Gordon too didn't have it easy growing up. She was born in Jamaica and at the age of seven, her auntie who lived in the UK offered for her to come over and live with her. So seven year old Gordon moved out of Jamaica to a whole new country by herself to go and live with her auntie. Then a couple months later her mother joined her. I'm not sure if I said, I feel like I didn't, but they were living in North London at this time at the auntie's house. In Gordon's life growing up she found herself in an abusive relationship and this guy exploited her to be a sex worker, where later in life she found herself to be in this hostel next door to Phoenix. All this took its toll on Gordon and she suffered from PTSD and personality disorder. They became friends and got along with each other, but Gordon liked Phoenix a bit too much and she kept making sexual advances on Phoenix. But Phoenix would politely decline, it wasn't what she was into and she wasn't into Gordon so she would just say no thanks. But Gordon didn't take this rejection quite so lightly. Every time Phoenix said no, she would up the aggression and up the persistence. Gordon became quite demanding and quite pushy, but Phoenix stuck to her guns and wasn't having it, which wound Gordon up even more. She became physically abusive, pushing Phoenix around the room, shoving her and being verbally abusive. And this went on for two whole months. It got to the point where Phoenix was even confining in her friends about Gordon and she sent a message to one of her friends. Her message said that there's a girl here who keeps asking me to be sexual. I think I might move back to London. It's scaring me. Gordon was fixated on Phoenix and on April the 11th she called up the Samaritans to say that there's a woman here that she wants to have sex with. The Samaritans could tell from the call that she was quite tipsy and had a bit to drink. Then a month later from this call, police find a woman standing over two suitcases with Phoenix's dismembered body inside. That lady was Chrissia Gordon. And like I said, she was immediately taken in for questioning and alongside this, police did their own investigation. In the investigation the police were carrying out, they decided to search the hostel as that was the home of both Phoenix and Gordon. When they arrived at the room, they realised that all the carpet had been taken off. So not only just the carpet, the bed and all the clothing in the room. As you can imagine, this is to get rid of evidence. My bad, I feel like the lighting on this video might have just changed. So from here, they wanted to track Gordon's movements on the days leading up to Phoenix's murder. And they started with phones because they're always telling. This is when they realised how truly sick Gordon is. Gordon used Phoenix's phone to keep in contact with Phoenix's family, pretending to be her. This is so they wouldn't be suspicious. And it worked. Phoenix's family thought that Phoenix was doing well in the hostel and completely unknown to them that their daughter had been murdered. Gordon kept this up for four whole weeks and she even downloaded an app that would manipulate Phoenix's old voice notes and create them into new ones. I don't know how it worked but she was manipulating Phoenix's voice anyway. They were getting actual voice notes of Phoenix. It's unimaginable that someone would do that. Once police had checked phones, CCTV footage, physical evidence and verbal evidence that Gordon gave them, they created a timeline of events. They believe that on the 16th of April, Phoenix was on the phone to her friend at around 3.28 a.m. At the end of this phone call, Phoenix said that she had to go but she's going to call the friend back. But Phoenix never got to return that phone call. At some point between half three and half six, Gordon came into Phoenix's room 
and we're guessing probably to make the sexual advances and for Phoenix to say no, the same old routine that they've been in for two months. Gordon could just not handle this rejection and she became increasingly physically abusive and it was around this time that a neighbour heard a woman say, help me, help me. I just don't know why you wouldn't call the police. Like, if I heard that in my apartment, I'm going to call the police. And I don't know whether that's because I watch true crime, but I feel like that's just something you do. But it gets worse. The neighbour hears drilling and banging. And bear in mind, this is from half three to six in the morning and reports nothing. But what the neighbour was actually hearing was Gordon stabbing Phoenix four times and none of these wounds would have been fatal if the neighbour had called for help. I don't want to put the blame on the neighbour but I just think you could have done something. Actually that's really harsh of me, I want to take that back, you don't know what the neighbour could have been thinking. The next day, April 17th, Gordon decides that she's going to try and get away with this murder so she buys a circular saw on Gumtree for £45. She uses this saw to dismember the body and then put the body in the two different suitcases. And once she'd done this, she decided to strip Phoenix's room of any evidence. And she got rid of the mattress and loads of black bin bags and she paid a guy to just get rid of them. Eight whole days after killing Phoenix, she decides to take the suitcase with Phoenix's body in and take it to a different location. It's guessed that she actually dismembered the body in around five different locations. She just kept trying to cut it up into smaller pieces. After eight whole days, the body would be decomposing and it's being kept in a suitcase, which would be quite humid. The smell would be vile. Gordon's friend, presumably the guy at the start in the car, took her to Gloucestershire where she actually left the body there. She leaves the suitcase by the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire for two whole weeks while she carries on her own life in Birmingham like she hasn't just killed someone and took a young girl's life away and left a body in Gloucestershire in a suitcase for two weeks is insane. After two whole weeks, Gordon decides to take herself back to Gloucestershire after living her life in Birmingham because you know there's a girl there that she took the life away of. So her and this guy, the friend, the car driver, decide to head back to Gloucester and try and set this body alight at around 5pm. They tried to do this in the woodlands but it didn't go to plan for whatever reason or didn't go the way Gordon wanted it to so she decided to abandon that idea and think of a new one. They were in and around the woodlands for five whole hours and then later into the evening this is where people called on them to the police for being suspicious. Which brings us back to where police found Gordon standing over two suitcases with the body in. Police had piles and piles Piles of evidence compiled against Gorda. She decided to plead guilty because it was going to be a no-brainer. The judge said that Gracia Gordon was a calculated killer and could have called for help after Phoenix had been stabbed and saved her life. Gracia Gordon got sentenced to a minimum of 23 years and 6 months for the murder of Phoenix Nets. Gordon's mother wrote a letter to the judge to say that she was eternally sorry for what her daughter had done, which is sweet, she didn't have to. And both Phoenix's parents came forward in court to express how devastated they was about their daughter. And that is all I have on the case of Phoenix Nats. I think the most shocking part for me, above everything, was that she was manipulating Phoenix's old voice notes and keeping in contact with her family. They were so oblivious to the fact that her daughter had been murdered because of Gordon's actions and I truly believe that she is a calculated killer, like the judge said. Let me know what you think down below or message me on Instagram. I'll put all my socials, well, I have TikTok and Instagram. I'll put them in the bio. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and most importantly, share. I really appreciate it. As I say in every video, it honestly does mean so much. You may have noticed if I was able to do it, I'm putting little links in the videos now. I hope I've done it, otherwise I'm gonna sound so stupid. Um, so I'm going to link a video that you can watch now um, of one of my previous cases if you haven't already and yeah thank you so much for watching I'll hopefully see you again soon bye